the factual acknowledgments. Okay, no, see, that's the deal with an Alford plea, is you are not acknowledging that the facts are true, like you would in a regular guilty plea. You're saying, I think that the state has enough evidence that a jury could be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that these facts are true, but yeah. you're not acknowledging on your own, yes, these are true. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't imagine how many people sent that to my inbox. Setty Nash, Setty Nash, that means gun is not a snitch. And you remember what his lawyer said. He's addressing his relationship with fellow rapper Young Thug after accepting a plea deal in the ongoing YSL Rico case. Authorities allege that Young Thug founded a violent street gang that ran for over a decade. Gunna, whose real name is Sergio Kitchens, was released from jail in 2022 after taking a plea deal. And for years, there has been speculation that he snitched to get out. In an interview with XXL Magazine, Gunna says he feels like everyone is being misled and they don't really know what's going on. He says his relationship with Young Thug is still the same. Gunna's lawyer, Steve Sadow, is also refuting the claims against his client. Gunna and his lawyer, Steve Sadow, both released statements refuting speculation that Gunna had snitched to get out of prison. Sadow said Gunner did not snitch to get out of jail. He has said nothing and is not cooperating. His plea statement cannot be used in court against any other defendant, so please stop spreading lies. Gunner breaks silence on relationship with young thug and snitching allegations. Vibe.com slash news entertainment via Vibe magazine. And then this bombshell of a clip came out yesterday further in illustrating the point of exactly what happened. Nash, you in trouble now. Your Honor, at this time, I believe that the instruction that the court has um, that should precede what will be marked as State's Exhibit 442Y that we have sent would be appropriately read. All right, so this is gonna be about his plea in yes. this case. Yes. Okay. In this case. All right. So um, I'm going to, again, instruct y'all, and this time everything I'm going to say is going to be applicable to this plea in this 2022 case. All right. So um, you are about to hear, and you actually have heard evidence that this witness, who was a co-defendant in this case, has pled guilty to some of the charges in this indictment. I caution you that the co-defendant's guilty plea conviction itself is only admitted for a limited purpose. That guilty plea is an admission by this witness only that he committed the criminal acts to which he pled. You are not to consider this co-defendant witness's guilty plea as evidence that any other defendant is guilty of committing any of the criminal acts alleged against them in this indictment. Each defendant is entitled to have the issue of his guilt determined solely on the basis of the evidence against him and not on whether another person has been convicted of the same charges with which the defendant is accused. If you find that the co-defendant witness provided testimony on the stand that is inconsistent with his guilty plea admissions, and they are going to be admissions in this case, this wasn't an Alfred plea, this was a regular guilty plea, you may consider the witness's prior inconsistent statement, that is his guilty plea admissions, including to the allegations in the charges to which he pled guilty, as substantive evidence, which you may consider against any defendant currently on trial for whatever bearing it may have to the issues on trial. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> and we are going to play that. I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Sledge a few more questions. Mr. Sledge, yesterday, you, uh, am I correct that you testified that you know of an Antonio Sumlin? Yeah, I know of him. Okay. And did you testify that that's the person that you called Obama? You never asked me did I call him Obama or not. Okay. Did you call him Obama? Yes. All right. And how um, well would you say you know him? You said, you know, of him. How yeah, well I used to see him around, but me and him never really hung out together. To your knowledge, did he ever claim YSL? Yes, I heard, yes. Okay. And when is the last time that you talked with Obama? <clears throat> I don't know, Ms. Love. Did you talk with him in 2022? Yes, probably, yeah. I probably talked to him in 2022. Do you know how often? Generally speaking, I don't need to... No, when, when I seen him, I talked to him. Okay. Did you... All right, Mr. Slaves, can I get you to raise your right hand as much as best you're able? Yes. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you should give in the matter now in hearing should be the truth, the whole truth, none but the truth, so be God or so firm? Yes, I do. Right, you put your hand down, sir. Mr. Sledge, please state your true, correct, and legal name. Antonio Sledge. And are you to say Antonio Sledge, also known as Milton, who is listed in indictment 22SC183572? Yes, ma'am. Are you at this time taking or under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medication? No, ma'am. Is there any medication that you normally take that you have not been given today? No, ma'am. How old are you and how far have you gone in school? I'm 41, 10th grade. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you are charged with the following offenses? Yes, ma'am. Conspiracy to violate the Rocketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act? Yes, ma'am. As well as possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Yes, ma'am. As listed in count 30 of this indictment. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that you have the right to plead either guilty or not guilty to these charges, and that if you plead not guilty or remain silent, you may receive a jury trial? Yes, ma'am. Have you had enough time to speak with your attorney, Mr. Derek Wright, about all of the facts and circumstances known to you regarding the charges in this indictment? Yes, ma'am. Any potential defenses? Yes, ma'am. Do you need more time to discuss this case with your attorney? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with his services? Yes, ma'am. Do you waive a formal reading of the indictment? Yes, ma'am. Do you waive any and all defects in the indictment, including any with respect to your name? Yes, ma'am. Have you been arrested on these charges? Yes, ma'am. The state is unaware of any outstanding warrants related to these charges. Do you or do you, Mr. Wright, know of any outstanding warrants that are related to these charges? I do not. Mr. Sledge, has your attorney advised you of the minimum and maximum sentence for each charge that you are pleading guilty to yes, today? Ma yes, ma'am. Do you understand that this is a negotiated plea of guilty? Yes, ma'am. Which means that the state will recommend to the court the following sentence. Yes, ma'am. As to count one, 15 years to serve on probation subject to the special conditions contained in the plea agreement that I have in my hand that I will show you in just a moment. And on count 30, although you are pleading guilty, sentencing will be withheld until the completion of the initial trial of this case. After the trial of this case, after the initial trial of this case, provided defendant you have complied with the special conditions outlined in sections B, C, D, F, and I of section three special conditions of sentence of this plea agreement, the state agrees that the defendant shall be allowed to withdraw his guilty plea on count 30, and the state shall agree to null cross count 30. Do you understand that the court does not have to accept that recommendation? And we will read into the record the terms of the plea agreement in a moment. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that the court can sentence you to the maximum on each charge and can run those sentences consecutively or one after the other if the court does not accept that negotiated plea. Yes, ma'am. I'm showing you what has been marked as State's Exhibit 1AS. Do you recognize the document uh, in State's Exhibit 1AS? Yes, ma'am. And is that your signature on page 7 of 7 of State's Exhibit 1AS. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, at this time, actually, and Mr. Sledge, have you had an opportunity to review each and every provision within State's Exhibit 1AS. Yes, ma'am. As reflected on State's Exhibit 1AS, the current charges that you face are count one, conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, and count 30, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon previously convicted of a felony involving the use or possession of a firearm, OCGA 1611-133. The negotiated sentence as outlined in States 1AS 
is count one, 15 years on probation, and count 30, sentencing withheld until the years on probation, and count 30, sentencing withheld until the years on probation, and count 30, sentencing withheld until the years on probation, and count 30, sentencing... We might need to skip forward to... Now, let me, let me do this, because I think it's only fair. And I work at being fair here. I don't want to sit up here and then give bad information. And then I have to do what I normally do. Like, hold on, this part was wrong and this part is wrong. This is the truth. Because I do do that. Some people can't, some people won't, some people don't. That's on them. I have no problem with admitting where my faults and flaws are in anything that I say on here. I take this very seriously. Even at times when I know I shouldn't. All right. <clears throat> Here's the pro-gunner argument, right? The pro-gunner argument is technically everything that Sadow said, if it holds up, gunner actually is not a snitch. That's just facts. We we had to be fair, square, obvious, and honest. If everything goes according to plan, meaning gunner got out, made his money, YSL, slack, whatever, cooler. But it would have to mean that Gunner beats, I mean Gunner, that Thug beats the Chargers. That's number one. That Thug has to beat the Chargers. Thug comes home, everything's gravy, everything's peasy. Now, they should only have a business relationship and should never travel in the same car together just because. But also, depends on the closing statement. See, if Miss Love references that the number two guy in charge also agreed with the state, we have his plea deal right here. You ain't got to say nothing. Actions speak louder than words. We have you absolutely saying a yes, ma'am, like monkey tonky. And that's that. See, one thing of how it looks with your Alfred pre, pre, plea, it's just like pleaded no low contendery. That's basically no contest. The reason you plead no low is because you will not be held civilly for the crap that you've done. So that's essentially what Gunner did. Gunner never actually technically said, I'm not guilty. Gunner said, it's in my best interest to get the fuck on out of here. It is what it is. Selfishly, should I did that? That's a decision for y'all to make. But I personally know I wouldn't have only for simply this. Nobody was signing Gunner from what I've seen. Now, I could be wrong and Atlanta could come out and be like, nah, Gunner had deals on the table, deals on the table. All right, cool. Well, if Gunner had deals on the table, the nigga should have been treated like Justin Bieber. Shouldn't have been around a whole bunch of stuff. It should have had security guards and all that crap. But also at the same time, Gunner understands street code and street ethics. All of that stuff matters. You're from the streets. You're supposedly from a neighborhood. So you understand how the ethics and codes work, regardless of anything and how others may have broken those codes. You cannot. And we've seen it before. And I know I'm definitely not the one who should be talking about news clips, but we've seen a news clip of you basically saying that and then violating that. Now, anybody want to say that you did? No, 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 no. I don't even do all that. We can, you'll get destroyed in that little pathetic debate. It's not real. So either way it goes, right? Gunner absolutely could be exonerated, but only if everybody is not found guilty. And they don't bring that up. Now, does Seti Nash change his mind from where he's at? No, I don't. No, I don't. Because at the end of the day, we're stronger together than we are divided. Y'all got to remember, a lot of this stuff that's brought in is brought in because of plea deals and because of other witnesses and all that crap. Or it couldn't be brought in because you couldn't confront the individuals about what actually was said. Hence why certain people that came on absolutely exonerated Young Thug. <clears throat> but are there degrees to this? Absolutely. freaking -lube. What Gunna did, in my opinion was weak as hell it ain't good but if it gets nobody convicted then it's not snitching i hate to say it that way if i'm be fair square obvious and honest snitching you got to get somebody convicted you got to get somebody the hell out of here you got to go tell the police he did it he did it he did it that's snitching 
Now, there's other forms of snitching where, you know, you dry snitching, where you talking about a situation and all that. You ain't really saying no names, but, you know, like, uh, what's cuz name about the old block? Boss Top. When he did that weird ass shit, that was dry snitching. So, we just going to wait to see, bro. I do believe 100% that Gunner was set up. I do believe that Gunner 100% wouldn't cut like that. Like, you could be a street nigga, not a jail nigga. I'm a street nigga. I ain't a jail nigga. I've been to jail, but I ain't no jail penitentiary ass nigga. So I understand that part right there in that argument. But I ask you guys this, and this is where people can break. If we all are in trouble, and let's say we're all at school, and we got a homie named Johnny, and you're supposedly the leader of our crew and Johnny is supposed to be the second person. We all get in trouble. We all stole like a piece of chocolate cake. Some of us have chocolate cake on our fingers. You got chocolate on your breath. Johnny doesn't have any chocolate on him and no chocolate on his breath. And Johnny basically say, listen, I know that there are people right here that 100% stole the cake because we already been caught. But I didn't do nothing. I had nothing to do with this. I would like to go. That's what it's going to boil down to because if everybody starts saying, I didn't do it, I didn't do it either, I didn't do it either, and they don't really have any evidence, technically, Johnny just a fuck, I mean, Technically, you'd be a lame. But Johnny would be a fucking lame. You, on the other hand, you ain't really caught. But chocolate on your breath means you could have ate a Tootsie Roll or Snickers before. You say nothing, and some of the cats with chocolate on their fingertips say, All right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. But the teacher is saying, You orchestrated everybody getting this piece of cake, bruh. And everybody else just starts saying, You know what? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say we all were in on it. But I'm not saying that he's, that you let us. I'm not going to say that, but you, we are, we all did participate in this. But you, you, the leader, you watching, you're the leader. You ain't saying nothing. But Johnny has decided to say, yeah, everybody in here might have had something. To, everybody in here did some of the stuff. And I did see some people. But I'm not going to say their names. What would you consider that? And I just leave y'all with that illustration right there. I personally would say, Johnny, you a lame ass motherfucker and that's dry snitching. So we call that snitching. But technically it's not snitching. So what do y'all think?